Grace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and all those who have ears to hear. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about I will have named it hypersexuality, carnality, and sister wisdom. So, we live in a generation that's full of hypersexuality. Like, everywhere you go, you see it on billboards, social media is everywhere. You have body parts everywhere. Pretty much, you know, the devil is trying to put all this sex, all these sexual images, all this temptation in your face. And this video is really geared towards the men. It's really geared, geared towards the men. And um, because I just see, I just see a huge problem when I was in the mall evangelizing. Just the vanity, you know, the vanity that's in malls, it, it's just, you know, it, it vexes me. It really, it, it really, it really vexes my soul just seeing that stuff, you know. I was thinking about how I used to love malls. I used to love going to malls. I used to love, you know, shopping and all that other stuff. But I realized, you know, I was just obsessed with vanity. I, I was obsessed, you know, with, with the... Um, the love of this world, but when I came to Christ, now I really see what this stuff is, and stuff is vanity, is carnality. But like I said, this video is really geared towards the men because nowadays men are very men are distracted by a lot of hypersexuality and vanity because men, a lot of men nowadays are living in their flesh. They're living you know, in their lust. And they don't know God. They, they don't know the word of God. And, you know, don't, they have no um, consideration of the word of God for help. They go to all these other YouTubers, these red pillars for help. You know, they go to all these other um, people for help, but they don't go to the, the, tr the true living God for help. And that's why guys aren't getting better. That's why guys aren't coming out of this. That's why so many guys are still bound up in pornography. This is why this stuff is happening because men aren't turning back to their first love. Men don't know how to use the sword of the spirit. They don't know how to use the word. So in this video, uh, I'm going to try to give, well, I'm going to give you guys verses. I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to try to explain to you guys the best I can using the wisdom God blessed me with. So how we can, as sons of men, how we can overcome this hypersexual world full of carnality and what has God blessed us with to overcome? Because God um, has gave us the tools to overcome this world. No matter how bad the temptation is, God has made a way for us to overcome this world. So guys, if you're still bound up in pornography, you're still having dreams of your ex, still having sex dreams, if you feel like, you know, I can't stop doing this. I can't stop chasing this girl. I can't stop looking at women. I can't stop looking at their butts. All this other stuff, all this super sexual stuff. The word of God is here to deliver you. Jesus Christ died on the cross to set you free. He took your punishment on the cross and he gives us power on earth. He took back dominion. He took back dominion for us on earth. So we, we can overcome this world. Now you just need to know the wisdom. You need to know the knowledge on, on how to. And this is when we come to the word of God. Now, explaining hypersexuality. So hypersexuality, you see all these women out here. Um, see all these women out here, you know, yoga pants. You have the yoga pants craze. You have all these women out here half naked. They're wearing all the athletic gear. Pretty much women are now showing off their curves. Even on social media, you know, you can't even look at a, you can't even look at, you know, I remember one time I wanted to look at a mountain and be like, you know, I want to see what this mountain looks like. Then you have, you know, these women, you know, with their poses and like I said, they're wearing all these tight clothing. And it's like, you can't even just go look, let's see what a place looks like without women trying to um, pose and look super sexual and stuff. I can do another video about that later while they're doing that. But you're trying to get my point. So the whole the whole world is in this whole super hypersexual stage right now. 
So this is when we really need to be disciplined in the Lord. This is when we really need the Holy Spirit to guide us and, you know, lead us to the Father. So first, first verse we're going to go to is Galatians 6, 8. Now, Galatians 6, 8 says, For he that sold to, the, to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that sold to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So if you, if you sow into your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. If you sow into your flesh, you're going to reap corruption, guys. So sow into your flesh, it could be um, masturbating, it could be um, chasing women, getting drunk, doing witchcraft, um, chasing money. Like if you sow into the works of the flesh, you're gonna re you're gonna reap corruption. You're, you're gonna be corrupt, people. You're gonna be corrupt. But like you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get closer to God when you sow into your flesh. But that's what the Bible says. If you sow into the spirit. You shall reap of the spirit life everlasting. Also, let's go to James 1.15. James James 1.15 says, Then when he lusteth, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and when and sin when it's finished, bring forth death. When it is finished, bring forth death. Sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So guys, when you're when you're sowing in your flesh, <laughs> when you when you're sowing in your flesh, people, like you're playing with death. Like when you're finished sowing into your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. Then the corruption is going to lead to death. People, people, we see it all the time. You know, when people get super drunk, they get super drunk. Some people, you know, just die out of nowhere. Some people walk into the street and get hit by a car. Which is, you know, when you sow into your flesh, it, it corrupts you, it corrupts your soul, corrupts your mental state. And in the end, if you don't repent from it, if you don't change, it's gonna bring forth death. It's gonna it's gonna destroy you one way or another. You know, judging about how long God's gonna have mercy upon your soul, but hey, if you don't love correction, it's gonna bring forth death. Genesis 4-7. Genesis 4 7. Now, the Lord was talking to Cain. And he said, If thou doest well, shall, not, shall thou not be accepted? And thou does not. And if thou does not well, sin life at the door, and to thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt go over him. So if you don't do well, guys, if you, if you don't overcome, if you don't overcome this um, hypersexual world, this hypersexuality generation, if you don't overcome your your um, masturbation habit, your your porn habit, if you don't overcome this, sin is always crouching at your door. It's always crouching at your door, people. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not seeking the Lord. If you're not trying to draw near to God, sin is crouching at your door. And its desire is to have you. And sadly to say, the desire of sin has a lot of guys right now. It has a lot of guys right now. Because the Lord told Cain, you should rule over it. So the Lord has given us the tools 
to, to overcome sin, to rule over sin. You know, the Lord sent his son to die on the cross for us, for us to have um, dominion back on earth. But if we don't understand the power of the cross, if we don't understand the, um, the importance of what Jesus did and believe in it and take the and take the tools he left us, you know, the word, he left us all the examples in the Bible. If we don't use this for our salvation, we're not going to be able to overcome the sin that's always crouching at our door. It's always crouching at our door, people. Our, 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 our job is not done. We're never done until we, till we reach the heavens, until we reach, um, you know, up there with the Father. He's always crouching at our door. Now, now let's see what has sin, all, all of sin, let's see who sin has destroyed. Let's go to Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah 13. Yeah, Nehemiah 13, 26 to 27. So, I mean, if, if you don't know who King Solomon is, you, you should, um, I guess, read the Bible, do a quick little summary. But, you know, King Solomon, king of Israel, you know, wisest man that ever existed, very rich man, uh, son of David, dude was full of glory. Dude was full of glory, you know, Solomon, he had it going on, man. He was blessed. He was blessed, highly favored. There's peace in his days. But Solomon fell. King Solomon fell. He didn't, he didn't fall by, like, you know, going against somebody in war and he got killed or he was betrayed or something. No, no, no. King Solomon fell by a woman. Well, women. He fell by with men, the wisest man in the world, the most powerful man in the world at his time. He was famous. If you read the Testament of Solomon, this dude was binding up all kinds of demons. This dude had control over these demonic spirits. But King Solomon, like, he had a lot of power when he was um, a true servant for the Most High. But it was women that corrupted his heart. It was women that destroyed him. Let's see what it says in Nehemiah 26 to 27. Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Neither less even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? So outlandish woman call, caused King Solomon to sin. We just read what sin would do to you, you know, when it conceives, what it brings forth. I mean, if you read the story about King Solomon, King Solomon... You know what? Let's just go. Let's go to First Kings eleven. Let's go to First Kings eleven. First Kings eleven, starting at one. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You should not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto, unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods 
and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of his David father, was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, or Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as as did David his father. Then, then, then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon, Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done to these, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statute which I commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I give it to thy servant. King Solomon had many wives. King Solomon sold into it. He sold into his flesh. He sold into his flesh, and these strange women caused him to sin. They caused him to sin and, and keep his heart, um, keep his heart away from the true living God. Now I just want the men to know this, like. Look, when you're chasing women, when you're giving all this attention to women and not putting your attention on the Most High, it's just not your. It's not just your um, idolizing women, but it also women also lead into idolatry. Chasing women leads to idolatry. You must understand the women nowadays, especially in this generation, they're very vain. They're very vain and they're very carnal. We know they're very hypersexual. We know they're very sexual by how the devil's trying to promote them and stuff, all the stuff they're wearing, the show off their curves. You know they're hyper, they're really um hypersexual. They're very sexual. You can you can even imagine how these strange women were very sexual also, because they didn't believe in the commands of the Lord. So there's no telling how sexual these women were in Solomon's time. So men, we chase these strange women. We chase these women who aren't, you know, um, daughters of the Most High. They're worldly women. They're going to make you be very vain, and they're going to make you um, worship idols. Worship idols. So they might not make you build a statue like Moloch, like they did with Solomon, but they can have you chasing other idols like money. You know, uh, Lamborghinis and stuff, they try to impress these women to get their attention for you to have sex. So these, these women are trying to make you so into your flesh by trying to promote their vain lifestyle, for trying to promote, um, for you to try to love vanity. You love um, idols to impress them and get their attention. It's a trap. It's a trap. It is a trap. Let's go to Proverbs seven sixteen. Now let's go to Proverbs seven six. Let's go to start at Proverbs seven six. So the ways of the harlot. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. In the twilight and the evening, in the black and dark night, and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and so to a heart. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Now she is without, now in the streets and lying in the way to every corner. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent, um, impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me, this day I have, I have paid my vows, therefore I came forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with card works, with fine linen of Egypt. She says, I have 
decked my bed with coverings of tapestry with carved works with the fine linen of Egypt. So you can see what this woman cares about. She's trying to impress this man with vanity. Like, oh, look, look at my tapestry, you know? Look at my tapestry. It's from Egypt. It's nice. See what I'm saying? Like, super sexual woman. She's a harlot. Talking sweet to your ear. Because, you know, she, she wants your money. I mean... She, she wants money, so another vanity, idolatry. And she's bragging about her tapestry. She's, she's bragging about her five women from Egypt. You can even see this in this generation of women right now. You know, like I said, they're super sexual. And, you know, they get their validation. They get their whole self-esteem based off fashion. Their, their whole purpose is, um, you know... What type of bag they got? If they have a Berkey bag, you know, if it's Gucci this, Gucci that, Louis Vuitton. They're chasing all this vanity. They're chasing all this vanity. And they want men to provide for their vanity. So, guys, it's a very, very dangerous time to be um, trying to date worldly women. It's very dangerous to not be in the Word of God and not have a true relationship with God because. When you're chasing these women out here nowadays, these worldly women, you're not just chasing women, bro. You're chasing a lot of different um, evil stuff that's going to lead your heart astray from from the uh, the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs twenty two fourteen. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. I'm gonna let you ponder on that. Yeah, I'm gonna go to first first Samuel fifteen twenty three. I know I'm going back and forth, guys, but I have a lot of verses, you know, I'm trying to, trying to get you guys in the word. The word of God will save you. First Samuel fifteen twenty three, for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is a is a iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected thee from being king. Now, Samuel was talking to Saul, but let's just look at the verse one more time. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee for being king. I mean, even though it's talking to Saul, I mean, it still reminds you of Solomon. It still reminds you of Solomon. Because the Lord told Solomon, hey, don't go after strange women. He rejected the word of the Lord. And the Lord pretty much rejected him as king, and his whole king was split and gave his king to someone, his kingdom to someone else. His kingdom was split. And Israel and Judah went downhill from there. And it says rebellion is a sin is witchcraft. You can see a lot of you can see how witchcraft is increasing in this generation, you know, with the women. Because women nowadays are they're very rebellious. They're, they're very rebellious. They don't they don't want families. They don't want commitments. Like I said, they really just they want vanity. They want power. So you see a lot of women nowadays in witchcraft. They're, re they're rebellious. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You know, guys are being stubborn. Guys don't want to submit to the Lord. Guys don't want to, you know, get in the word. They're stubborn. Guys think they know it all. Guys think they know it all already for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. A lot of guys think they, they know the word. They think they, they, they think they know the Bible. They never even read the Bible. A lot of mockers and scoffers nowadays. 
And they're bound in iniquity. They're, they're bound in idolatry. They're bound in sin. Because they rejected the word of the Lord. Uh, let's go to Galatians I'm going to get there, guys. I promise. All right. Now. All right cool. The works of the flesh. So this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you, should, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. So in there you see, it was idolatry. It was idolatry, witchcraft, fornication, uncleanness. So, a lot, a lot of the same sins that our guys are stuck in right now. Idolatry, because Jesus said, "Hey, if you look with a woman with lust, you commit adultery. You commit adultery in your heart already." Fornication. Guys are bound in fornication, sleeping around with other women. You can say you got idolatry, you got witchcraft. And these things, it, it breeds other stuff. It breeds, it breeds jealousy between relationships. So, guys, when you're in, when you're, when you're sowing into your flesh, when you're sowing into your flesh, it's, it's more, you're doing, it's more things are happening than just you masturbating. More things are happening than you just um, staring at women and getting um, excited about. Like, more things are happening. There, there's more sins attached to that, um, that one action you're doing. This is why Paul says you need to walk in the spirit. Because if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You won't have all these problems listed right here. And you won't be rejected as king. The Lord says, you know, we come to Christ. We, we are kings and we are, we are priests. We are kings and we are priests. Now, I told you guys all this information, like, all right, we know the generation is super sexual. We know, you know, women are very carnal. Women are very carnal. This world is very vain, very carnal. What can we do to overcome this? All right. Wisdom. You need wisdom. Wisdom. Let's go. To Proverbs seven four. Because the Bible says in, this, in Hosea four six, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. People perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know how to overcome this world because they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the wisdom to overcome. You know, they feel like they're stuck. They feel like there's no way out. They feel like they're just, you know, it's just who they are. They can't change, but that's not true. That's not true. You can definitely overcome. You can definitely overcome this world with the power of God. You can't do it by your own accord. You can't do it by your own your own strength. But you can definitely do it with Jesus by your side. So Proverbs 7, 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, 
from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Look at that. Thou say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Mm. Proverbs 8, 4. No, let's just start at Proverbs 8. Let's start from 1. Does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the path. She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming and at the doors. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is of the sons of men. O you simple, understand wisdom, ye fools. Be you of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. So wisdom is crying. Wisdom is crying to you. Wisdom is crying to us, guys. Wisdom will keep us from the strange woman. What wisdom? Wisdom from the Lord. It will keep you from the strange woman. And Proverbs 8, Proverbs 8, 11 says, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Wisdom is better than rubies. Wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not compared to it. Because in Proverbs 3, in Proverbs 3, 13, Ooh, ooh. Check this out. Check this out. In Proverbs 3 13, it says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that get of understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than mine gold. She is she is more precious than rubies, and all the things that can desire are not to be compared unto her. So wisdom is better than the idolatry that's in this world right now. It's pretty much what it's saying. It says it's better than silver and gold. So what do a lot of these women want? They want, you know, they want their lifestyle to be um, taken care of. You know, they, they want men with a lot of silver and gold. They want a lot of men with a lot of money. So it gets guys in this mindset like, all right, I gotta, I gotta stack this money. I gotta stack this bread. I gotta have a six-figure job because if I want a woman, you know, if I want a, a beautiful, attractive woman, I gotta provide for her, I gotta buy her this expensive bag, I gotta take her on these expensive vacations, they gotta do all this. Well, that, at least that was the mindset I was stuck in. At least that's the mindset I was in. It, it gets guys stuck in chasing idolatry for them to sold to their flesh because they're lusting after women. But wisdom, is better than that stuff. Wisdom is better than any materialistic thing. The wisdom from God is better than silver and gold. It's better than rubies. And it will keep you away from the strange woman. It will keep you away from the strange woman. It will keep you away. Proverbs 2.6 Proverbs 2, 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. Now, let's go to James 1, 5. Now, like, all right, Troy, so how do I get wisdom? Do I just read the word of God? Yes, read the word of God to get wisdom. Also, very simple action. James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. So if you ask the Lord for wisdom, he will give you wisdom. The Lord wants to help you. The Lord wants to help you. The Lord can set you free. We just read in a previous um 
versus that wisdom will keep you away from the strange woman. Wisdom is better than rubies, it's better than gold, it's better than idolatry. So all these problems, all these unnecessary problems you have, um, you're stressing about guys because you're trying to chase women, you're trying to chase money, you're doing all this stuff to gratify yourself with temporary pleasure, you have headaches, you're in relationships with women you don't need to be in, you know, you, you can't control yourself, you have no self-control, bound in um, addictions, sexual addictions, and the only thing that can set you free is, is the wisdom that comes from the Lord. And he, he will give it to you if you just ask. Like right? The Lord doesn't discriminate. If you really want to be set free, ask the Lord for wisdom. He will set you free. He will set you free. Amen. Now, James 4, 8, James 4, 8 says, look, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Clench your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. If you, if you draw nigh to God, it, it will give you strength. If you draw nigh to him, he will draw near to you. The Bible also says God is not tempted by evil. So the more you're in the presence of the Lord, the more you're in the word, the more you're drawing near to him, he'll draw, um, the more you're drawing near to him, it, it will keep you away from a strange woman. The Lord will provide wisdom, especially if you ask for it. But you must come with a repentant heart. You must, you must repent. You must, you must repent for trying to do it your own way. You must repent for trying to do it um, with the wisdom of the world. Let's see what the Bible says of the wisdom of the world. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. First Corinthians 2, starting at 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration, but in, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I see a lot of guys nowadays that have their faith in the wisdom of men. A lot of guys out here are trying to do like semen retention and stuff like that. Look, if the Lord leads you to that at first to get you free, then hey, amen. That's the that's you and the Lord. That's you and the Lord's path. But I see a lot of guys, you know, they're trying to overcome this super sexual world, you know, with you know the wisdom of man. They try to go to all these red pill dating sites, all these red pill dating coaches, you know. And a lot of these guys are just saying, like, you know, do semen retention and focus on your purpose. You know, just focus on your purpose. And, and now guys are, they're going to, like, one, one idolatry to another one. So if you're not idolizing women, you're trying to idolize, you know, this other, this job that's not um, edifying you. Now your, whole, now your whole attention is on you trying to get money and stuff. You're trying to get money and be this rich guy. And it's vanity. It's vain. What about your salvation? What about your salvation? I know I see some other guys on YouTube, some commercials saying, oh, some guys are just doing semen retention just to attract more women. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? We need to draw nigh to God. We need to draw closer to God so he can draw near to us. We need the wisdom that comes from God, not the wisdom of men. The, the wisdom of men is foolish. The wisdom of men is never going to set you free truly. It's never going to set you free truly. Because we all want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're all going to have to stand before Jesus by the way we live. And these red pill coaches aren't 
trying to get you closer to God. You know, a lot of these people are trying to make you feel like, oh, you are God, you know, oh, you're this, or you're the man, and, you know, these women should be um, chasing you and stuff. You know, it's, it's a lot of pride, you know, it's a lot of pride. God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So your temptations can be overcome. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, There have no temptation taking you, but such as common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Oh, look, wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. was talking about temptation, it was talking, then afterwards it says, hey, flee from idolatry. I'm telling you guys, like, temptation is everywhere, but God will give you a way out. God will give you a way of escape, especially if you're drawing near to him, especially if you're receiving the wisdom from him, from the Lord. You can overcome this. You can overcome this. You don't have to play this devilish game that a lot of guys are playing. Like you don't have to be bound up in sexual sin. But you're choosing to when you're rejecting the word of the Lord. It's the truth. A lot, a lot of mighty men have been slain by women. And if you're familiar with the Bible, you know, you know Samson, David fell to Bathsheba. And these were mighty men of God. You know, they, they did some great things to the Lord. They, they defeated a lot of different men, slain a lot of different men, but they were overpowered by women. Not physically, but spiritually. They were, th they were thrown off by women. Solomon. Heart heart went away from the Lord because of women. We have to be wise in these last days, man. We have, we have to be wise in, in, in these last days. We have to we have to have a close relationship with the Lord. We have to seek Him. We have to be very careful you know, the things we look at. We gotta, we gotta protect our eyes. We gotta make sure, you know, we're not wrong, we're not around the wrong people. They're gonna lead us into temptation, lead us to idolatry. We gotta get serious when I walk with the Lord. You have to get serious with this, because it doesn't look. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much um, status you have. So all this stuff can come. All that stuff can come down if you cannot crucify your flesh. If you cannot crucify your flesh, a woman can destroy everything you have built. Don't get caught up in society's game. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in it. All these celebrities, all these rappers rapping about, you know, buying women this expensive stuff, you know, these beautiful women, expensive stuff, and you think, well, you know, this is what I gotta do, you know, to get an attractive woman. No, you need to be doing the will of the Father. When the time is right, the Lord will send you a wife. When it's right, the Lord will send you a wife. But you got to make sure that you're good with God first. You got to make sure that, you know, you're fleeing from idolatry. You're fleeing from fornication. You got to make sure, you know, you're not out here sowing into your flesh. You got to make sure you're sowing to the spirit. So you can reap life everlasting. Your mind needs to be on things above, not things on the earth. Your mind needs to be on the things of Christ and not the things of your flesh. 
Now, guys, we can overcome this. You can overcome this. You can overcome this, but you must make a decision. Do you hate evil? Do you hate it? Do you hate evil? You need to hate, you need to hate evilness. You need, you need to hate idolatry. You need to hate fornication. You need to hate this stuff. Why? Because the Lord hates it. You need to love what the Lord loves and hate what the, what, and hate what the Lord hates. You need, to, you need to make a decision. Do you want to be set free? Because you can be set free. You can be set free. But do you want to be set free? 